Okay, let's move on to our next thing. We've talked all about equations so far, but now we're going to talk more about inequalities, which we have brought up way back at the beginning of the year. But we're going to take it a step further. We're going to work on writing and graphing inequalities. So the first thing we want to do is fill in all our information about these symbols so that we know exactly what they mean, both by name and by words we might see in real world, which we'll come back to in level two. So go ahead and start filling in your name for the symbol while I talk through each one. Um, so the way I look at these symbols, I read them left to right. And so like this first symbol, the bigger sign uh, or side, like the mouth, as sometimes we look at it as an alligator or something like that. But the mouth comes first when you read left to right. So this would be greater than. Okay. So this one's greater than. The uh, greater than symbol with the line under it is kind of like it has part of an equal sign with it. And so this could mean greater than or equal to, which you'll see what I mean when we talk here in a second. Okay, so it's still the greater than sign, but you have the line there, so it also could be or equal to. So it's greater than or equal to is what this symbol's called. Now if you read this one left to right, you see how the smaller part comes first and the mouth is facing away. So it's less than. And then the one with the line under is less than or equal to. Okay. Now in the real world, so some words that could describe these for greater than, you could also say more than or above. Makes sense, right? Greater than is going to be above or more than. Now here's where it gets a little bit trickier. So even though this symbol is called greater than or equal to, the words you're going to see make it seem like it's going to be less, but you have to think about it in context. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this since we're coming back to it in level two, but just to lay the groundwork, um, this is greater than or equal to, and you could see at least, for example, if I said, um, I have at least five pairs of shoes at home, um, that means I have five or more. So that's where that greater than is. You really have to think about the context, even though it says least, it's saying at least. So that means there could be more. Same thing here, no less than. It doesn't say less than, it says no less than. So I could say I have um, no less than four blankets uh, at home or something like that. I don't know. That was the first thing I thought of. Um, so even though it's for greater than, you're going to see that word less or least, but you're saying it in a way where you're saying like that's the minimum and there could be more. All right. Um, some of the words for less than could be fewer than or below, just the opposite of what greater than was. And then same thing with the less than or equal to. Now you're going to say at most. There's going to be a maximum and then you can be less than that um, and no more than. So I could say I have... Um, Oh goodness, I don't know. Um, maybe it's I spend uh, at most um, two hours at the gym. I don't know, something like that. Or I spend no more than two hours at the gym. So that would be the most, and then it's going to be less than that. There's other examples we'll get to later, um, but those are some for now. Then the other piece I want you to write down is your notes, which we're going to use here in a second is how do you represent this symbol on a number line? So for greater than or less than, you're gonna use an open circle. I'll explain more why in a second, just get it written down. For greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, you're gonna use a closed circle. Okay, and so I'm just here, your symbols, right? You don't necessarily need to draw these, I just wanna show you. Um, so without the equal to, it's an open circle. With the equal to, it's a closed circle. If you need to go back to write anything down, feel free, but I'm going to move on to our examples. Um, so just real quick, when you graph an inequality, the point of graphing it is to represent all the possible solutions because an inequality means that it's not necessarily equal to something um, or there's lots of possible solutions. So um, when you do that with an open circle with the less than or greater than symbols, that means that that number is not a solution. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Um, but that's why we represent it with an open circle because it's still our starting point, but it's not included as a possible solution. Okay. Whereas a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to is going to have a closed circle because that number is a part of the solution. So we want to make sure it's included. Okay, so let's get to some examples because that'll make more sense. So um, when we do this, and you have these steps, but I just want to make sure you're looking. When we are about to graph a, um, oh, hold on one second. 
Alrighty, had to make a little fix. I know you saw something, but that's all right. We'll just talk through it. Okay, so um, when you are graphing solutions for an inequality, again, you are representing all the possibilities. So the first thing to do is draw the appropriate circle based off of the symbol, just like what we talked about. So what I'm getting at here is we have x is greater than 3. So for example, 3 would not be a solution for x because 3 is not greater than 3. However, like for example, 3.1 could work because 3.1 is greater than 3, but also things like 5 or 12 or 128, and those, those numbers are greater than 3 as well, which is why there's an infinite amount of um, numbers greater than 3, and so we want to represent that. So here's my first tip, aside from the drawing the appropriate circle, the first tip I'm going to give you so you don't really have to think a lot with your number line, is take the number that you're starting with, put it right in the middle, and then just number your number line uh, to the right and left of that based off of where that number is. So when I did that, I have 3 here, and then I just counted 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then to the left, 2, 1, 0, and then I kept going because it could, I might need those negatives. So I'm negative 1, negative 2, and then we have the arrows at the end because that is going to keep going on and on. We just don't need to show all of it. We're showing just a snippet of the number line. So go ahead and number your number line the way I did. Um, it's not that you have to start in the middle. I just think this is a very easy way to do it so that you don't really have to stop and think about your number line. You don't want to have to figure out, oh, where, you know, how do I include this number and what do I count by? Just plop it in the middle and then count by ones. Or if it's a bigger number, you may like count by fives or tens or something like that. That's fine. But just take that starting number, whatever they give you, put it right in the middle and then just number your number line the rest of the way accordingly, okay? So then we need to draw our appropriate circle, and it is a greater than symbol, so we do not want 3 included, so we are going to put an open circle right on 3. So it's still our starting point because even a number like 3.0001 would still be a solution to this because that's still greater than 3. It's not a lot greater, but it is greater. So we want to make sure we're including everything we need to. So 3 is still our starting point. We just don't want 3 actually included, so that's why we do an open circle there. And then we need to shade the number line the appropriate way. Greater than 3 means we're going to go to the right, and so we're going to shade in. And I just draw an arrow. You don't have to really shade it. You're just drawing an arrow. But you do want an arrow at the end here because it could go past 8, right? It's not like 8's the only, um, like, the biggest number. We could keep going. So we want that arrow to continue. And then a great way is that you can check if you're correct. So I can pick any number on this side and substitute in to see if it works. So, for example, I could just pick 5, and I'd say, yep, 5 is greater than 3, so, yep, I shade it the correct way. And again, there's no line underneath. It's not or equal to, so we have an open circle. Okay? So let's try another one. Okay? We're going to do the exact same thing, but now it's x is greater than or equal to 3. So I can number my number line the exact same way. I stuck 3 right in the middle and then just numbered it appropriately. The appropriate circle is going to be a closed circle because 3 could be um, a possible solution, and I'm shading again to the right because it's greater than. It's greater than or equal to. So 3 could be a solution, or it could be something greater than 3. It just depends. We don't know what x is. We just know that x has to be greater than or equal to 3. And I could select something from the side. I could even select 3 because I included it now with my dot, and 3 is greater than or equal to 3, but so is everything else on this side. So real quick, I wanted to show that difference. Now I know this number line that I have on here is a little different than the one we did, but it still shows you the same idea. These are similar because they are both greater than, so we both shaded to the right. We also both started at 3, but the difference is we had greater than 3 so that we had an open circle because 3 was not included, versus over here the difference is we did have 3 as a possible solution, so we had a closed circle. So see how they look very similar, but just a little different because 3 is not included in this one and can be included in this one. Let's try just a couple more. So let's see. I'm going to actually have you pause the video. See if you can try these next two on your own. I helped you out with the number line if you were stuck. You put negative 2 in the middle and the number from there. But go ahead and pause the video and see if you can try the next two on your own, and then I will reveal the answers. So give it a shot. Pause your video. All right, let's see if you got it. So we need to have an open circle on negative 2 because, oops, 
it did that's all right it showed more um because it was less than less than not equal to so it's not included and i shaded to the left of it because it's less than and so we're looking towards the left with our arrow and if i look like let's pick negative six negative six is less than negative two because remember it's negatives um and so it does work okay um i hope you tried the other one too if not pause it here but otherwise here are the answers for the next one we're again at negative two, so our numbering is the exact same, stuck negative two in the middle and then numbered from there. This time it's less than or equal to, so we're gonna have a closed circle and then shade it to the left because it's less than, okay? And negative two should be included. Again, just wanna show you that comparison. Um, this one had just less than, so it has an open circle. Well, we did still start at negative two on both and shade it to the left because it was less than. Neg uh, negative two is not a solution on this one, but could be a solution on this one. So that's how they are similar, but also different. Okay, so now you have some IXL to go try. It is IXL AA.2 in sixth grade. You must get a smart score of 90. It is not very hard. It's basically what you were doing just now. Just make sure you're paying attention because you need to click the circle appropriately to be open or closed. Um, but anyways, you can get a score of 90, and then when you do, show that to a friend, and they can sign off on this for you, and you can move on to your level one assessment, okay? Good luck. You can do it. Let me know if you have any questions.